What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and this is Assetto Corsa, which is currently up to Early Access version number 1.0.3 release candidates, which hopefully means that we are getting close to the end of the Early Access Assetto Corsa, which means that hopefully closer to an official release. I'm not going to cover everything in this video that was updated, because that is a whole lot of stuff, but uh... I'm going to put a change log down in the description for you guys to go ahead and check out yourself. Uh, and I'd highly recommend you do that. But we're going to take a look at the content side of things here in particular. Well, we're taking a Ferrari to the spa. But um, lame joke. And it's the Ferrari at the spa. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, the Ferrari and it's the circuit. You know, it is, yeah, you, you, you guys got the joke. We're going to be driving here on the Hypercar Road Tires, which are the optional tires here. And they are the less grippy tires available on this car. The other tires are intermediate race tires, which, eh, race car tires on street cars, not really my thing. Plus more slidage. Technical turns. Anyways, first things that you're going to notice, well, skies, they're gray. Uh, yeah. Your game's not going to look like that by default. When you update it, that's not how Spa looks, although it is very fitting of Spa. But um, I was editing some files, <laughs> tweaking some things, as is the theme with Assetto Corsa. And I wasn't happy with the results, so I just decided, hey, I'll just go ahead and delete this file, and the game will rebuild me new default setting files. Oh, okay. And I guess it just basically gave me cloudy skies. <laughs> I, I don't know. So I guess that's a little bit of unintentional win. Just from my perspective, because I really like the look that it has. And it's nice to see something that's not just the standard blue sky, Seto Corsa blue sky, you know. It's different, and therefore it's appreciated. So thanks, game. Thanks a lot. And we are driving with the factory assist setting, which basically means that you get the assists that the drive that the car actually comes with that the driver can utilize. There we go. There's a train wreck of a sentence. But uh, basically, as far as I know, that's a new setting. I didn't notice that previously, at least. Which, uh... I think that's the setting I'm going to use from now on. Uh, I think it's the right way to do things. I'm definitely glad that they've done it that way because you know, I do think it's kind of silly that within sim racing, I'm not a huge fan of assists. I generally never use them. You know, there's only exceptions like well, this or you know GT3 cars in iRacing, for example, where it's like the car has the assists, it uses the assists in the real world. Why does that have to be a taboo thing within sim racing? It's like, you know, I can just as easily drive without assists or anything like that, but the car has that, and they're designed to go faster, which is supposed to be the whole point. So why not utilize them? It's just one of those things where I think, you know, especially with GT3 cars being so popular, you know, when they have assists... They have ABS, they have traction control on them in the real world. Why shouldn't they have them in the game? You know, that's part of simulating things, isn't it? But, uh, well, that could be a different... That could be a whole different video entirely. But, uh, yes, we will turn off the traction control later on in this video. Just kind of a proof of concept to demonstrate the differences. As well, this is a hyper car. It does have... Holy bejeebus, 950 horsepower, somewhere thereabouts, so. The difference should be pretty obvious, and it does make a very good demonstration, because I personally do find this car a lot faster with the traction control on, and I do find that it does a very good job, actually, of giving you the grip that is there, and not holding you back. Now, oftentimes in sim racing, You'll see traction control, for example, and it'll be implemented in a way that if you actually use it, you'll just basically be limiting yourself. You know, you're just going to go slower. But here in this car, actually, with these tires, which mind you are 
less grippy than the other tires. Actually does a very good job of cutting out the wheel spin and giving you just the maximum amount of power that is available to put down to the rear tires without generating wheel spin. Which is the way it probably should be on a car that costs about a million bucks. Fortunately, the Assetto Corsa version is much more, much, 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 much cheaper. And if you look at the dashboard, there's also a little bit of other traction control. It's not really traction control, but, you know, obviously when you mention horsepower figures, they're going to go ahead and use the biggest one that they can because, well, that's expected. Everybody likes the most horsepower, not... Oh, the engine only makes like 750 horsepower. The whole car combined has like two or 950 horsepower, somewhere thereabouts, but a lot of that is a fair bit of that, I should say is from the electric motors through the hybrid system on this car, which is actually simulated. If you look at the dashboard, that green bar in the upper right-hand corner above the speedometer that just ticked over 300 kilometers an hour. Yep. That is the battery level. And then to the direct right of the tachometer there in the middle, you'll notice a little bar that changes colors. It's basically how much hybrid assist you're getting in terms of power. When it's full blue, you're getting the maximum power from the motors, electric motors. When it's white, they're regenerating battery power. And you don't have to do anything with the with the curves or anything. You don't have to press a button. Uh, there's no like manual override or anything like that. automatically only give you as much as you need. For example, when we do turn traction control off, you'll see that it's putting down, you know, its maximum amount full blue bar, in simple terms, a lot less because it's detecting that there's wheel spin, so it's not going to add more power because you don't need more power if you're already spinning the wheels. So while it has 950 horsepower or whatever, with both systems enabled, it doesn't necessarily always put that much out. So it is much easier to drive than if it was always 950 horsepower. Hopefully that makes sense. Pretty interesting. Nice to see that stuff like that simulated, and they definitely have gone out of their way to mention that they have been the first people to uh, <laughs> simulate LaFerrari's curve system, which my response is I didn't know anyone else was actually trying, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Maybe that's just the kind of person I am, but uh, it's good to see that stuff simulated. And, you know, like I said, simulating the cars, we should be simulating the systems within the cars as well, which... At least in terms of talk, that's what Kuno seems to want to do as well, so... Good stuff. Good stuff. But the sound updates, the sound engine update... Uh, it's noticeable. Things sound different. And I think perhaps the best part of the update is that right there. You guys probably couldn't hear it in the video, but new tire uh, scrubbing sounds, skidding sounds, as well as rumble strip sounds, which to my ears sound a lot better than what was there before. And it really does make that uh, those sound effects a little bit more communicative and helps you drive the car and because you can tell what is actually happening. You have a little bit better feel for it. From the audio which hopefully you're racing with a headset if not you should get a headset because it's good for you except for your hair it's bad for your hair but uh, some of the cars do sound good some of the cars don't really sound all that great one that uh, people have been going crazy about was the uh, 458 gt2 
personally, I'm not hugely excited by the sounds of that car. It doesn't really sound all that realistic to me. Uh, it just sounds a whole lot peakier than the real car, a lot less raspy, which seems to apply to pretty much all the cars at times. You know, it sounds good, it sounds okay. It's definitely an improvement, but there's definitely work to be done. And I'm not just talking about you know, some of the reverb and echo effects that are kind of overdone right now that will be tweaked, but it just feels like some of the audio samples just aren't necessarily all that great to begin with. It's like at times it still sounds very synthetic, uh, which, yeah, not necessarily the best, but it's definitely an improvement, and I think that uh, in the long run, a set of course is definitely going to benefit from that change. And once the modders start working on different sound packs and everything like that, I expect we'll definitely start to see the improvement that that uh, sound engine change will actually bring to a set of course. So, as you probably saw, we have switched off the traction control means that we're now going crazy. <laughs> really, this car. Who needs a car? Who needs a street car? I'll do 190 miles an hour down the Kemmel Strait. Who needs that? Who needs that? Who, who actually needs that? Nobody. Nobody needs it. Of course, everybody wants it, but... <laughs> just so ridiculously fast. That is the most difficult part of driving this car. It really is. Just getting used to how long a braking zone actually is. Because you think, oh, hey, you know, this is a hypercar, million dollar car. Goes 190 miles an hour down the Kemmel Strait, for crying out loud. Active aerodynamics, you know, it's, it's gonna stop. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not anytime soon. Like the brakes are good by road car standards, but you know it's still a road car, and we're still using road tires. So don't expect it to stop like an F1 car, just because it's really expensive and it's a Ferrari. Man, oh man. I gotta say, I've been enjoying driving this car a lot recently. You know, this update... I did a video previously with the 458 GT2, or I should say Ferruccio, from the United Racing Design uh, mod team, both an R-Factor 2 and a Seto Corsa. And... I really wasn't a fan of the force feedback and just the general Assetto Corsa things compared to R-Factor 2. And when this update came around, I naturally have been driving the R-Factor 2 Honda NSX and just having a blast. That Before this update for Assetto Corsa, I had been driving that car and only this that car. Whoa, we've got it all wrong. Pay attention to the road. But uh, I had been driving that car a lot, and then naturally, you know, for the purpose of making a video, not necessarily because I wanted to, you know, I, I switched over to a set of Corsa, and that was on whatever the update was. I think it was a Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember. It's now Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. It's like I've been trying to enjoy a set of Corsa, and I, I think it probably is because of playing so much R-Factor 2 recently, which you know, R-Factor 2, when it's on, when it's switched on, as I've said before, it's it's amazing. When it's switched off, it's definitely switched off, but with that car, it's just fantastic. Absolutely love driving that NSX, and it's just been an absolute blast with it since it's been released. But, uh, I just had a terrible time when the update first came out, and I mean, it was like, it was it was bad. Like I had no enjoyment at all with it, and just found it really frustrating and not a happy experience. <laughs> so 
so I basically deleted the game, <laughs> reinstalled it, and uh, tried again the next day. <laughs> thought the same thing. I thought, well, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and delete the game again, make sure we get all the folders and files that, you know, maybe Steam forgot to delete, and we'll do that. Come back the next day, and I'm like, eh, nope, <laughs> it's still not there. I'm going to go ahead and switch wheels. And, uh, yeah. I switched over to my Driving Force GT that I still have, and I'm like, eh, not so much. It's like the force feedback's improved a little bit. I'll talk about that here in a moment, but... It's like, I can't stand how loud this thing is. This is... <laughs> I forgot how terrible this was, but... Uh, it's just like, I guess over the course of the days between that initial first go with it and here Sunday or Saturday evening, it's like, I guess I've just gotten used to it, but... It's just like, the force feedback still just does not make me happy in a set of course if I have to be honest. It's like I've gotten more used to it and some cars are definitely better than others but it's just like one of those things where I just don't have the confidence to, to just drive the way I want to drive and something like this because of that I, I just I just like have no feel for well, I need to change that setting, but I have no feel for it. It just, it just isn't there. And it's not like a case of, of road feel. And I mentioned this before, and people just like went crazy. Is it's like you know you never know what somebody else actually feels. Like you never will in anything. But. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I mentioned that I really did not like the force feedback in and, and that uh, R Factor is Seto Corsa comparison. And, of course, people jumped on the bag bandwagon, the defense force, and it's like, <laughs> that is the Seto Corsa, honestly. And that's the same thing that I'm still getting, still getting the same feel. It's just, force feedback still definitely needs work. It's like, I can tell it's not necessarily a physics problem. I think the underlying physics of Assetto Corsa are very good. Not necessarily great. I do personally think that R Factor 2, when it is running at its maximum, when it's running at its best, it is better force feedback and physics wise than Assetto Corsa, in my opinion. But that's not to say that the, the physics here in Assetto Corsa are bad, but. I just don't get as much enjoyment out of it because it just doesn't feel as detailed. And that, you know, lack of detail also gives me less confidence to do silly things like slide around like a hole again, but, you know, just in general, it's just, I'd like to see the force feedback improved and they've said that they'll improve the force feedback and it did take a little bit of a step forward with the release candidate update but it's probably now that this sound's been updated probably one of the weaker areas within a set of course if I had to pick one it's like I may have gotten more used to it and less rage happy about it because believe me my first night with this I was ready to I was ready to drop the nuke <laughs> like I even went back to Netcar Pro and actually found it much better feeling I still find it much better feeling um, it's like, you know, I, I definitely have given it a go. I've given it a try. I've tried to like it. I want to like it. And I like it physics-wise, but it's just like that interface between me, my wheel, and the game just isn't there. And in particular, that is one of the big areas I'm just not happy with. That's kind of weird. It's a little bit of a stutter, I guess. But, you know, when you just crank the wheel over into a uh, massive understeer. You know, you're overloading the front tires and the car's just gonna go on straight ahead and you're gonna build massive tire heat in the fronts and massive tire wear. When you do that, the steering should basically, I don't know if there's a technical name for it, but I'm just gonna call it knockover. Like the force will build up 
as the front tires load up. And then once you overwhelm them, like this, the weight in the steering wheel should basically decrease rapidly as you go off into understeer. And it's something that is present in a set of Corsa. It's definitely there. Don't get me wrong. It's like I can kind of sort of feel it, but it's not as pronounced as I feel it should be. You know, it's like, and, and some of the cars is better than others. For example, the E30 M3 streetcar. I haven't driven the, the uh, Group A car recently, but in that car, I can feel it. I can tell where it is. I have a better handle on it. And it's more pleasing to drive because of it. And it's like, honestly, I, I quite like that car, but... It's like everything needs to get up to that standard. Just, there's basically really not that much change in resistance. But uh, there's that, and then there's also, I really would like to see a minimum force adjustment for this game, which is something that both R Factor 2 and iRacing have, which essentially allows the game to be told there's this much resistance in your steering wheel so basically it's kind of like a offset for your force feedback for example if you know five percent force output from the game doesn't actually result in your wheel being moved doesn't actually result in an output it's pretty much useless but if you tell it for example six percent is the first you know force feedback output on the steering wheel itself that actually results in an output, then the sim will know that 1% force registered by the sim should actually be output as 6% force, for example. Which in both R-Factor 2 and iRacing, a properly set force feedback thanks to the mid-force adjustment, you know, it's night and day difference almost if you have it set right and if you have it set wrong. So honestly, I think that hopefully will be something that Assetto Corsa ends up having because it's something that I think would probably go a, a good way to improving the force feedback in other areas. Like, I don't think it would fix the, uh, the knockover or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, Yeah, there's no grip. We're just going to bury it. But, uh, I, I do think it would be an improvement, and it's something that I would like to see. Hopefully we'll see it in, in some time. Obviously, this is still early access. Things will be changed. Things will be improved. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just have no clue where in the world the braking zones are in this car. Okay, one last lap, and we'll do it sideways. Sort of. No guarantees. The odds of wrecking are high. Yeah, and I told you, I told you. But that gives me a perfect example to showcase the uh, visual damage. Yeah, woo. Yeah, yeah, visual damage and active aerodynamics. Yeah, look at that. It's it's dancing. It's dancing. It's dancing. It's dancing. But uh, yeah, visual damage. It is available in a set of course now. And yeah, that is crumpled <laughs> carbon fiber. But uh, well, every, every every sim out there struggles with with visual damage, so I'm not necessarily going to fault a set of Corsa and only a set of Corsa. Everybody could probably improve on this, but uh, hey, it at least tells you that the car is damaged, and that's the important part. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a replay lap from the trackside cameras. I'll let you guys take a listen to that, but uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Right, bye bye.